from the heart of Silicon Valley. It's the Cube, covering Comcast Innovation Day. Brought to you by Comcast. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with the Cube. We're in the Comcast Silicon Valley Innovation Center here in Sunnyvale, just off the runways here at Moffett Field. Really cool place, a lot of fun toys and gadgets that I have not got to play with yet, but I got to do before I leave. But the conversation today is really about customer experience. We had a small panel this morning of experts talking about customer experience. What does that mean? How do we do a better job at it? And we're excited to have an expert brought in just for this conversation. She's Annette Franz, the founder and CEO of CX Journey. Annette, great to see you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. It's been a fun morning. Fun what did you think? What were some of your impressions of the conversation this morning? You know what? It's always great to sit in a room with so many people who have been living and breathing this customer experience journey. And so it was great to hear what Comcast is doing. It was great to hear from some of the other folks in the room what are some of the latest trends in terms of data and technology and, and where customer experience is headed. So yeah, it was awesome. So customer experience is, is it's a little bit over. It's almost kind of digital transformation a little bit. Everyone's like experience, experience, experience. And, and that's a big complicated topic. How yep. do you help customers really kind of break it down, make it into something manageable, make it into something they can actually approach and have some success with? Yeah, so I spend a lot of my time working with clients who are brand new to this field, right? I had a former boss who said that they can't even spell CX, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's so, a problem. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I, I, I go in there and I, you know, really listen and understand what their pain points are and what they need help with, and then get them started on that journey. Basically, soup to nuts CX strategy work. We typically start out making sure that the right foundation is in place in terms of the executives, that they're all aligned, that they're all committed to this work. Um, the culture, we've got the right culture in place. We've got, you know, some feedback from employees and from customers of what's going well and what's not. And then from there, we dive right into um, a phase that I call understanding. And that's listening to customers, listening to employees, um, developing personas so that we can really understand who customers are and who our employees really are. And then also journey mapping to really walk in their shoes to understand the experience that they're having today and then design, use that to design a better experience for tomorrow. So there's a lot of work that happens up front to make you know the things that we talked about in there this morning right. happen. What's the biggest gap? Because everyone always talks about being customer centric, yep. and yep. I'm sure if you talk to any CEO, of course we're customer centric, and you know we see it with like with like Amazon, Andy Jassy, uh, and, and and that team is just crazy hyper customer centric, yeah. and they execute it with specific behaviors. So yep. what's the part that's usually missing that they think they're customer centric? but they're really not. Yeah, I think you just hit the nail on the head with the word execute, right? So you, there, there's a stat out there that's been out there for forever and we know it. Um, every single company, every single business interviews or surveys us to death, right? So they have all this great feedback, but they do nothing with it. They just don't execute, they just don't act on it. And they've got such rich feedback and, and, and customers want to tell them, hey, you're doing this well, but hey, this is not going so well, so please fix it because we want to continue doing business with you. And so, yeah, it's about execute. I think that's one problem. The other problem is that they focus on the metrics and not on actually doing something with the feedback to improve right. the experience. Do they just ignore it? Do they not have the systems to capture it? Are they, are they you know, kind of analysis paralysis? You just said they have yes. like all this great data <laughs> and they're not doing anything about it. Why? Yeah, there, the, it is that to analysis paralysis. Let's just beat the numbers to death and, and uh, what's, the, what's the quote about, you know, beating the number until they, beating the data until it talks kind of thing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Don't know that one. <laughs> <laughs> Something, I know I've just messed that yeah, up. Yeah, but, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, they don't have the system in place to actually then take what they learned and go do something with it. And I think a big part of it, and we talked about this in the room this morning too, was around um, having that commitment from the top, having the CEO say, listen, we're doing this and we're going to, when we listen to our customers, we're going to act on what we hear. So, and but they don't, they don't have that infrastructure in place to actually go and then do it. Right, it's pretty interesting. You you have um, a deck that you shared in advance, eight principles of customer centricity. Yes. And of the eight, three are people. People yes. before products, people before profits, people before metrics. That sounds great, but it sounds contrary to everything we hear these days about measure, 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 right? Yeah. It's human resources. It's It almost feels like we're kind of back to these kind of time motion yes. studies <laughs> in, in trying to optimize people as if they're a machine as opposed to being a person. Yeah, well, it's it's not because we have to, the way that we have to think about it is we have to put the human into this. That's what customer experience is all about, right?
right? It's about putting the human in the experience. And it's interesting that you bring up that deck because when I open that talk, um, I show a, a, a commercial from Acura. And it's, if you've never seen it, it's called The Test. If You can Google it and find the video. And it's really about if we don't view them as dummies, something amazing happens. That's the tagline, right? And so it's really about people. The experience is all about people. Our business is all about people. It's why we're in business, right? It's all about the customer. It's for the customer. And who's going to deliver that? Our employees. And so we've got to put the people first, and then the numbers will come. Right. Another one that you had in there I just have to touch on was was forget the golden rule. Oh, yes. Which, which I always thought yes. the golden rules was, you know, he who has the gold makes the rules. Oh, yes. But you're talking about a different golden rule, which is really treat <laughs> treat others not the way you think they want to, that you want to be treated, but treat people the way that they want to be treated. That's right. It's such a small yeah, it's the nuance. Platinum rule. But it's it's so important. It's so important. And I love this example that I share too. I just recently read a book by Hal Rosenbluth called The Customer Comes Second, right? And to most people that seems counterintuitive, but he's really referring to the employee comes more first, which I love. And um, the example that he gives is he's left-handed. And he goes into a restaurant, he frequents this restaurant all the time. And until I read the story, I never even thought about this. And now that I go to restaurants, I think about this all the time. The silverware is always on the right-hand side. But he's left-handed. So this restaurant that he frequents, the waitress, he always seemed to have the same waitress. She caught on. And so when he, when he would come into the restaurant, she would set the silverware down on the left-hand side for him. That's treating people the way that they want to be treated. And that's what customer experience is all about. Right. One of the topics that you talked about in, in, the, in the session this morning was um, the reputation and that service experience is really defined by the sum of all your interactions. Yes. And it's really important to kind of keep a... Uh, a view of that, that it's not just an interaction, it's right. many, many interactions yeah. over a period of time. That sounds so hard to manage. And then there's also this kind of the last uh, experience, <laughs> yes. which is probably <laughs> overweighted uh, yes. based on the whole. So yes. how do people keep that in mind? How do they, how do they you know, make sure that they're thinking that kind of holistically about the customer yeah. engagement across a number of fronts within yeah. the company? Well, you've got to think about it as think about it as a journey, not just touch points, not just a, a, a bunch of little touch points. Because if you think about just the last experience or just a touch point, then you're thinking about transactions. You're not thinking about a relationship. And what we're trying to get at is customer relationships and not just transactional. You know, it's it's they're in, they're out, they're gone, right? So we but we want relationships. We want them to be customers for life. And, and that's the only way we're, that we're going to do it is if we focus on the journey. Right. But about the challenge of, of that which was special suddenly becomes the norm. And we talk mm, a lot about, yes. you know, kind of the consumerization yes. of IT because as soon as I get great results on a Google search or, um, you know, I find exactly what I need on Amazon in, in two clicks. And then to take that into whatever my B2B or B2C application yep. is when now those expectations are not being driven by what I promised to, to deliver, right. but they're being driven by all these third party apps that I have A, no control of, and are probably <laughs> developing at a faster pace of innovation that I can keep up. How yep. should people, you know, kind of absorb that, deal with it, and, and try to take some lessons from that in the delivery of their own applications. Yeah, so you so you brought up two things there, which I, I want to address the first one too, which was about the delighting customers. But to answer your question, it's really about focusing on your customers and your customers' needs. Um, and that's why I talk a lot about customer understanding, right? It's, it's about listening to your customers, it's about developing personas and really understanding who they are, what their pain points are, what their problems are, what needs are they trying to solve, or problems are they trying to solve, um, and then walking in their shoes through journey mapping and that understanding allows us to design an experience for our customers right for our customers if we don't solve a problem for our customers they will go elsewhere and they'll get their problem solved elsewhere right so I think that's really important um, the first part of your question was our point was around delighting our customers and you're absolutely right we don't have to delight customers at every touch point I know that's counter to what a lot of people might say or think but to your point once we delight at every touch point now now it becomes the new norm. It's an expectation that has now been set. And now delight, where does it stop? You know, right. delight is here and then it's here and then it's here. And so so it's, it's a whole different. So my, my thinking on that is that most businesses cannot delight at every touch point, and they certainly don't. Um, I think we need to meet expectations, and the, and, and the only way that we can do that is to listen and to understand and, and, and then act on what we hear, and um, most businesses are still very primitive even when it comes to that. Right. Okay, I'll give you the last word. Okay. Um, what's, the, what's the kind of the most consistent 
easy to fix stumble that most customers are doing when you when you get engaged and you walk in what's that one thing that you know with 90 percent confidence factor that when you walk in this is going to be you know one of these three or four little yeah. things that they should stop doing yeah. or that they should do um just 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 to get off the baseline yeah i think it's you know what i think it's it's a combination of sort of speed and responsiveness i'll, I'll give you an example i won't name the company but it, but i thought man in this day and age this shouldn't be happening right it was a company that i contacted i was supposed to set up an account and um they and i and i couldn't for it just wasn't working i tried different browsers just wasn't working so i sent them an e oh, I, first i tried to call but i got stuck in ivr hell and then i sent an email and my the email that I got back was an autoresponder that said, we'll re reply within five business days. Five business days. <laughs> why didn't you just tweet to the CEO? I know, I should have. <laughs> I'm like, really? Where? Are, why didn't you just ask me to send a fax, right? right? right. You know, so. <laughs> so that's the kind of stuff that, seriously, I, I when I saw that email, I was like, really? In 2019, we're still responding in five business right. days? That's just, that's just ludicrous. So I think that's one of the, and it's such, it doesn't cost anything to respond in a timely manner right? and to respond at all. All, right you know here it is it's been I haven't heard from them yet so it's been like seven days now so <laughs> so there's that and next right? time just tweet tweet I'm, tweet at the CEO I'm going to yes. <laughs> hopefully I'm, the CEO tweets and maybe he doesn't tweet I know right <laughs> yeah well and that uh, you know nothing but opportunity for you because this is not an oh, easy yeah. it's not an easy uh, thing to do it's 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 hard to stay up with people's expectations yeah. and and to drive new and innovative products when they don't necessarily even know how to engage absolutely. with those things yeah absolutely yeah the field is wide open because like I said there's still so many companies that are still just trying to get the basics right so right. absolutely well thanks for taking a few minutes uh, of your time and thanks, thanks for, for participating me. today yeah, absolutely thank All you right. she's annette i'm jeff you're watching the cube we're at the comcast silicon valley innovation center thanks for watching we'll see you next time